the protective power of covenant. And this shows you from the Word of God how to walk in divine protection every day of your life. Not just for you, but for your household. Amen. I like to make this declaration with me. Say, I will never die in a terrorist attack. They won't find my remains at the scene of the crash. My children will not be found overdosed in a drug house. The protection of God's on my house. Amen. And that book will show you how to walk in that protective power. And we've already had testimonies come back. Phenomenal testimonies of God's goodness and His protection. And uh, it's, it'll bless you. Many people, every time I sing and play, people always ask me, do you have any music? And I never did have any. But I finally got so tired of people asking me that I went last year and I recorded an album. And uh, many people don't know this, but this was voted number one gospel album 2016 by my mother. And so uh, I, I knew that it was, uh, I knew there was probably a bias there somewhere. But uh, I still hang that plaque on my wall, and I'm not ashamed of it. <laughs> and uh, so you can grab that. If you're one of those people that you don't prefer a CD, you like MP3, it's available on iTunes and on Google Play if you want to download it on your phone. I think it's only $5 on there. It'll be a blessing to you. And then I told you, go on to your app store and download our free app. It's called Miracle Word. Just download that free app. It has all kinds of resources, all of our videos, all of our articles we write, all those kinds of things. But... It also has our 24-hour digital radio station, Miracle Word Radio, 24 hours of preaching and teaching to keep you built up in faith. Can you say amen? Yes. And that is available on the Google Play Store as well as the Apple App Store, and it will be a blessing to you. The final thing I wanted to make mention of, well, two more things. This is um, every month we stay in touch with our, our friends, our partners. We send them miracle updates, things that are going on in the ministry, and stir your faith and build you up. And uh, this is a woman here that was completely, let me show you this picture. She was healed just a few weeks ago in Sarnia, Ontario, in Canada. And she was sitting in the back. I saw she had a breathing machine on. She had an oxygen tank with her and the tubes running up under her nose. The Holy Spirit, I called her out one night by the power of God. And I laid my hands on her. The power of God hit her body. I told her, take that breathing machine off. She couldn't do anything with it. She's walking real slow, just taxed, you know, in her lungs. God's power touched her that night. She took off the machine, and we started taking a march around the big auditorium. I mean, I walked that woman all the way around like three, four times. She stayed off it for over 20, 30 minutes, came back the next night with no breathing machine, no tubes. She told the doctors and told her that her lungs were so filled with fungus and bacteria that on the x-ray it looked like shards of glass on the inside of her lungs. He said, I can't even do an operation because it would hurt you too bad. You just have to try to naturally get it out as best we can. God healed her in one moment. Can you say amen? So if you'd like to receive these postcards absolutely free every month, you can sign up back at our table, and we're happy to send them to you, as well as every quarter we send out our magazine, Miracle Word Magazine. And that's full of articles myself. My wife has been writing phenomenal articles for the women, awesome stuff from the Word of God. You know, one of these last, I can't remember, I don't know if you guys remember, it was either the last one or the one before, she dealt with something that really we've never had to deal with before until this recent generation, which is people feeling depression and anxiety that comes from comparing each other on social media. Yeah. That's something that is all over people today, that you see what other moms are cooking, you see what other vacations people are taking, you see what other jobs they're working, you think, man, what's wrong with me? And there is a trap of comparison in social media that the enemy has used to destroy people's confidence, their self-esteem. But she dealt with it from the Word of God, how to be confident who God's made you to be. And as the, uh, as the writer learned the Word of God, don't compare yourselves among yourselves because you're unwise. Amen. But do what God's called you to do. And so these will build your faith. I put testimonies in there, all kinds of stuff. And this is the final thing I want to say. I'm so pumped. I'm like, I'm literally <coughs> jumping out of my shoes tonight because three weeks ago, I was praying and asking God about this generation and how we need to go higher in the supernatural realm. And uh, the Lord instructed me. I've never had an instruction like this before. But he instructed me to start building an online training center or university that we're launching this month. It's called Miracle Word University. And it's launching on July the 24th is the first course that's coming out. We'll be teaching on the power of the Holy Ghost is the whole course. 
We're not going to give you some of this cessationist talk of, well, the Holy Ghost stopped moving when the last apostle died. No, he didn't. He still performs miracles. People are still being baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. And I'm going to show you biblically and doctrinally from a Pentecostal perspective these things that God needs us to know and understand to walk in the power of God. And this is not just information, but we're teaching revelation that's going to put you and equip you to a place where you can do what God's called you to do. Amen? And the nicest thing is we're keeping these classes extremely affordable. I was at one service, and this preacher had his Bible school that he was selling at his product table. It was $1,500 a year. I said, my Lord, I don't know who, who can afford that, but we're making these courses $69. Just $69, and I even have a thing on there that if you do it over two months, if you pay it over two months, $35 a month, you can't beat it. But it's, uh, it's coming out so soon. I'm so pumped. We've already filmed all the courses, and we've already edited them. They're down. They're being uploaded. The nice thing, you don't have to leave your couch. You can leave your pajama pants on, eat ramen noodles and stadiums, or whatever you like, fruit loops and fruity pepper cereal, and sit there with cheese dripping off your lip and watching the Word of God from the couch. That's wonderful. You know what I mean? And uh, it's available on your computer, your tablet, your phone, whatever you want to watch it on. And there's also a discussion forum. So anybody that has questions, you can engage. We already have 250 plus students signed up for the classes, and we want you to be a part of it as well. So if you'd like to be a part of what we're getting ready to launch, then all you have to do is on your phone or whatever you're going to do on the internet, browse to miracleword.com forward slash you, the letter U, miracleword.com forward slash you. And these classes are beginning very soon. I'm so excited. We're going to start every month. Our goal is to have new courses available for people to be built up. You know what the Bible says in Hosea 4, 6? God said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. He didn't say because the enemy is launching attacks. He didn't say because the enemy is stronger than they are. He said the only reason they're being destroyed, they don't have enough knowledge. And when you gain a knowledge of the word of God, it puts you in a place of command. Hallelujah. In the natural realm. That's why John 8.32 says, you'll know the truth, and the truth will do what? Any area where you're void of truth, you're void of freedom. Amen. I said, any area you're void of truth, you're void of freedom. And so we're making it extremely easy for this millennial generation, generation, everybody to get in. One of the things I was talking to pastor about this, the, and I've talked to other pastors too, it baffles me that you'll have people that will come on fire from churches just like this, and they're on fire for the things of God, on fire for the Word of God and the Spirit of God, and they want to go get a Christian education, and then go to some college with all liberal Baptist professors that talk them right out of the Holy Ghost. By the time they graduate, they're deader than three in the morning. No life, no power left. What happened? Well, you got hooked up with somebody that convinced you of facts that are not truth. That's why we're taking these classes from a Pentecostal charismatic perspective that we're not, we're not by any means going to compromise the truth of the Holy Spirit, the power of God's Word, the miracles that we're seeing on a daily basis. Amen. That can be your story too. Can you say amen? amen? So we'd love to have you be a part of that. If you'd like to sign up, please do. And we'll be sending out more information very soon. Can you say amen? amen. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's get into it. And uh, I want to read you one verse of scripture from uh, this chapter, and then I'm going to begin to teach. I don't have any notes. This is going to be an adventure in faith. We'll see what God has for us tonight. Amen. I used to have notes. You know, I used to write messages, and then I'd stand up to preach, and the Lord would go, don't preach that, preach something else. And so I started thinking, what's the point of even making notes? You know, just do what the Holy Ghost says. See, I'm, I'm you know, I'm not, I'm dumb, but I'm not that dumb. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians 5, let's look at one verse, verse 7. The Bible says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. So think about this for a second. If you're, if you're taking notes, write this down. The opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is sight. The opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is sight. We walk by faith. You know, you understand it says the righteous. It's not that we don't walk by faith. We walk. It doesn't say we walk by faith, not by doubt. It says we walk by faith, not by sight. And the problem is, is that the enemy wants you to believe that whatever you're seeing in the natural is the truth. 
But I found out something. That there's a big difference between facts and truth. Facts can change. Truth stays the same. Ooh, hallelujah. Let me just give you an example. I mean, we're not Christian scientists in here. But if somebody said, well, you're diagnosed with cancer cell, I just, I just confess it's not even there. It's not even there. It's not even there. We ignore its existence. No. Just because there's a fact doesn't mean it has to be your story. Just because, you know, the Bible, my father's preached this for years. Faith doesn't ignore reality. Faith deals with reality. Amen. David didn't get out on the battlefield and say, I don't believe Goliath exists. I don't believe Goliath exists. No, he took him down. I said he took him down. And so faith deals with the facts. How does it deal with the facts? By the power of God's truth. And God's truth can override the world's facts. So just because you might have got a bad report from a doctor, doesn't mean that has to be your portion for the rest of your life. He might tell you, well, you got this going on, you got that going on. Say, that might be what you say, but I've got a higher truth that is God's word. And if he said I'm healed, I don't care what specialist said I'm going to die. Yeah. Woo, I'm I mean, look, how much of a specialist can you, you can't be more special than God. He's the specialist. He's the one with wisdom. He's the one with truth. You can't get more special than his report. But there comes a point in every person's life where you have to make up your mind, whose report will you believe? And we declare, we shall believe the report of the Lord. And so I don't care what's going on in this nation, no matter what's going on in this state, and what's going on on the East Coast, if God said one thing, I'm sticking with that, and let God be true and every man a liar. Because his truth is higher than our facts. You know, there was a time in my life, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean the devil stops trying to attack you. He tries to attack. He does everything he can. But, you know, there was a time I set up, I had set up a tent to preach the gospel in North Carolina. And as I, would, I had said, I'd give this testimony because it shakes me to my core every time I give it. I was in North Carolina preaching the gospel right in Charlotte. And we held a week crusade. So many had healed. So many saved. Fed over a thousand families in the projects area. Groceries, boxes of groceries, set up huge blow-ups for the kids to come and play and have fun, show them the love of Jesus. Face painting, everything you can think of. But at the end of that meeting, after all those miracles had taken place, my little daughter, Madeline, who's my oldest daughter, she fell into some kind of sickness. We didn't know what it was. But here she is laying, and she's the most energetic girl you've ever seen. But now she's just laying. She can't even move. Eyes rolled in the back of her head. I had to carry her everywhere. She's only two years old at the time. I'm carrying and said, this is not like her. Something wrong here. And I took her into the hospital when we got back to Virginia. I said, Doc, what's going on with my daughter? He said, oh, i got to run some tests, run blood tests. And so he come back with a long face. You know what he told me? Oh, I'm sorry, Reverend Shuttlesworth. i got bad news for you. He said, we just found that we did tests on your daughter that she has a severe blood disease and that she'll have it for the rest of her life. It'll affect her heart. We'll have to have her on medication for her heart for her whole life. She won't be able to exert herself like the other kids. She won't be able to do sports, run, play, because if she does, it'll affect her heart, and she'll become weakened. That's what's going on in her body. Well, my wife and I, you know, we could have been just like those in the natural world, said, oh, maybe this is God's plan for our daughter. Maybe he's teaching us to be stronger in faith. Maybe he's teaching us to be stronger Christians or to minister to those that also have the same kind of problem. But God doesn't use evil things to teach his children to be strong. God doesn't use sickness or disease or things that he's redeemed you from to teach you a lesson. That's as foolish as me watching my daughter go up when she's a little baby, up onto the counter, crawl up there on a chair, push while the, while the toaster's pushed down, and get ready to put her hand in the toaster when it's red hot. And me sitting back and say, yeah, let her go ahead and try that. She won't do that again, will she? <laughs> what kind of a loving father wants to see his little daughter get third degree burns on her hand rather than rushing over to pull her away from the danger? I mean, some people, the way they preach God, yeah, listen, if he was a natural man, child services, come take us away. The way some people preach about in this generation. Like he's putting us through abuse and putting us through harassment just to get us to be better Christians. That's not the God we serve. The Bible said in the book of James, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father above and in whom there is no 
variableness. That means he don't change his mind about how he feels about you. If he loved you yesterday, he loves you today. If he was going to bless you yesterday, he'll bless you today. If he was healing people 3,000 years ago, he's still healing them today. He, he has no variableness. He does not change. It is good gifts that God uses. But it's the trick of the enemy to make us believe that sometimes God sends evil for a purpose. But God doesn't tempt a man with evil. God doesn't send evil into someone's life to build their strength. Uh -uh. That's not a doctrine that the Bible teaches. So when I got that report from the doctor, I didn't sit back and wonder whether it was God or whether it was the devil. I just began to fast and pray. I said, that might be the facts on the paper, but it's not going to be our story. I thought, you know, you say, you pray, talk to the Lord like this. Look, I'm real with this thing. I said, God, I'm going to be traveling around this nation telling people you're a healer and a deliverer if I can't even get my own kids healed. I'm not going to sit around with sick kids watching other people get healed. So either it's going to work in our house or I'm hanging up my hat and going to sell cars or something. I'm going to do something else. I'm not going to be a preacher that doesn't even know how to get it done. So, Lord, here's your opportunity to be strong and show yourself mighty. And we began to fast and pray. I broke out the bottle of oil. People wonder if I was getting ready to cook chicken. I was getting ready to pray. I put some oil on my hand and anointed that baby. And you know, it's a different story when it's your own family, isn't it? It's different when you pray for somebody you don't know or you've never met before. But when it hits home and it's you and it's your family you're dealing with, then the devil comes to you and says, Ooh, thought you were a person of faith. Thought you had the anointing in your life. See, that's how he was talking to me. Whispering in my ear, thought you were God's man of faith and power. Thought you were a miracle man. Can't even get your own daughter healed. And if you listen to the report of the devil, then you'll always miss who God called you to be. Because you don't go by what you see. You go by what he said. I don't go by what I see. I go by what he said. I don't go by what I see. I go by what he said. He, what he said is always higher than what I see. I said, what he said. Now, see, that's the mistake Peter made. He saw Jesus come walking on the water in the middle of the night. And Peter said, Lord, if it's really you, call me out of this boat to come and walk with you on the water. And the, the Bible says, the Lord said, Peter, come. And right, right there, watch, that was what he said. I don't believe Peter walked on the water. I believe he walked on the word of God. I said, I believe he walked on the word. Because you can't walk on water, you walk on the word. And when he stepped out of the boat, if Jesus had never said, come, Peter would not have been empowered to walk on water. You don't walk by what you see, you walk by what you heard. And when Jesus said, come, Peter swung his leg over the boat and started walking on the word that came out of Jesus' mouth. But what happened to him? He started looking at what he could see. And when he started focusing on what he could see, then what he had heard got to the back of his mind and he began to sink. See, this is why those that are of faith, we don't go by what we see, we go by what we heard. Hallelujah. The moment you start making choices based on what you see in the natural realm, that's the moment you start to go down. That's the moment you begin to descend. But when you make choices based on what you read, based on what you heard preached, that's how God can lift you head and shoulders above the rest and put you on a level that nobody's walking at. I found out in the Word of God, Psalm 75, verses 6 and 7, the Bible said promotion doesn't come from the east or the west or the south, but promotion comes from the Lord. He's the one who decides who will rise and who will fall. Hallelujah. How does he decide? Not sovereignly picking and choosing. He's looking for people whose hearts are turned toward him, the Bible said. And his eyes are searching to and fro across the earth. All he's looking for is somebody who has put themselves in position for promotion. By turning their heart 